Hi, Aries. Welcome to your April 2018 astral update. It's Raina here. So Aries, this is your birthday month. Happy birthday to those of you born in April and those of you who are born in uh, the end of March who are listening then. And uh, so it's your solar return. You should feel physically energetic, psychically energetic. And also you may be uh sensing that there is a new cycle ahead of you, which there is. So this is a time to take advantage of that by maybe writing down some of the things you would like to accomplish in the coming 12 months, which we call setting intentions. And um, setting intentions is something that is often done around the time of the new moon. And your new moon for your for your sign is actually on the 15th of the month at 26 degrees of Aries. So I mean, if you want to get technical about it, and I don't like to, um, to do these kinds of things, because um, then it confuses certain people. But uh, this is an example of a general forecast and how it affects other people, certain people. Because let's say that your sun is at 27 degrees, or 28 degrees of Aries, or 29 degrees. So if you're born, maybe around April 19th, 18th, 19th, 20th, or around there, it depends on what year you're born. Um, the new moon is actually falling in your 12th house. So basically, you would wait until the new moon in Taurus in mid-May to really feel that sense of continuity or uh, not actually continuity, but that sense of uh, moving ahead in life. And um, because your solar return at that point ha wouldn't have even occurred yet. So because it's uh, mid-April when the new moon is happening. So this is why we have to regard these as general readings uh, but I do feel that even with general readings, you can get some sense of what's happening. And that's going to happen to you too. It's just going to be a matter of time. So it'll be a preview for, for some of the people who are born at the very end of the sign of Aries. But anyway, um, let's start with what is coming into uh, the month of uh, April in terms of energy. Uh, we have a Mercury retrograde, and it happens to be in Aries, and it stays in Aries during the whole retrograde cycle. So for the first couple of weeks of the month, you may be feeling like you're kind of scrutinizing yourself, you're kind of like, um, analyzing how you present yourself, it could be even like looking in the mirror, looking at your body, seeing what you want to change there, because the, uh, the first house which is where this uh, Mercury retrograde is occurring is the house of the self. Now, if we get metaphysical about things, we could uh, debate whether or not the body is the self. And I don't believe that it is. But in this uh, time space reality, this third dimensional uh, reality, we are uh, going to have some you know, awareness of the body and wanting to optimize that. And so this may be where it's at for you or just the way that you come across to other people and just your life in general. You may be like really thinking about things and they might be tied into your a solar return as well, where you're kind of like taking stock of where you've been in the last year and kind of um, deciding where you want to go. So uh, this Mercury retrograde is going to continue until the day of the new moon in Aries. So I think for Aries people, this is highly symbolic where it's like it presses the reset button and then it's like you're, you're finally moving forward. So you may feel for the first half of the month, Aries, that things are kind of um, going in slow motion or just not the progress that you want. And so for an Aries person, you're already impatient as it is. This can just make it a little bit more so, can exacerbate the situation. However, it allows you, maybe the better way of saying it is it forces you 
into thinking about to slowing down and thinking about uh, what your game plan is for the next year and beyond the next year, actually. But one thing that we can all agree upon is that the sun is in your sign until the 19th of the month. So for over half of the month, you have uh, that wonderful feeling of the sun kind of giving you that sense of vitality. And that can make you feel even more energized than you normally are because you're normally a very energetic person. But there's always that sense of well-being when the sun is in your sign. And um, on the 19th, when the sun goes into the second house, into Taurus, this is going to be good for your finances because that's what the second house is all about. As the month begins, um, Venus is actually in that second house. And the sun joins Venus there on the 19th. Now, what is Venus in the second house? That's money. Um, that can be money. Now, obviously, nobody can make guarantees, but Venus rules this house. And so Venus is all about what the second house is about. And so it can be a situation where you are attracting money to you more easily than you normally do. Venus is the attractor. And so it's not this question of having to really um, struggle for it because the second house is the money you earn by the work that you do. But Venus can make it a lot easier to attract that money. And for that brief period, which would be about five days when the sun and Venus are in that house, that lends a lot of strength to, to this endeavor. And actually, uh, the sun can help you be creative about um, ideas, um, maybe in the future, of what you can do to make money. And um, the sun is a very potent force, very creative force. Now, on the 24th, Venus moves into Gemini. So it will be going into the third house. And that's the house that it rules. <laughs> um, and so what this can mean for you at that time is some of you in the period prior to that um, may have been thinking about ways to earn money and maybe through communication. Uh, that's one of the ways that you came up. So something online, uh, or if it's not just based on you actually saying anything, it could be at least internet based. And the reason that you may be thinking about this is ways that it could be like an addition to other money that you're earning. So if it's something online that doesn't require you to physically be there, it may be a great income stream uh, in addition to whatever it else that you're doing in your life. Now, before I continue, I wanted, I was actually going to start this reading talking about a couple of heavy hitters that are retrograding in April and how they affect your sign, because they're actually going to be affecting your 10th house of career. And since we're talking about earning money, I figured that would be a good jumping off point. So Saturn and Pluto are both re retrograding in April, which is quite interesting to me. Um, both of them are considered um, quite intense influences. Um, for Saturn, it's of more of the restrictive variety where uh, we're forced to discipline ourselves. We're forced to take things seriously and organize and maybe plan for the future, set down foundations. With Pluto, it's all about kind of confronting our shadow self. It's nothing less than total transformation. And they, both of these planets, you know, happen to be in your 10th house of career. So for Aries in general, since Pluto has been in your 10th house for 10 years, this is something where certain Aries people, I'm not going to say all, because some of you may be watching for your sun sign and your, ri your rising sign is your natal chart, and that that will tend to correspond with the mundane events in your life. 
And that may be totally different where, where Pluto is. Uh, and based on your time of birth is going to be much more accurate. But for those of you who have, you know, so I'm not going to say all of you have experienced this and maybe you, all of you have, even the ones who have experienced this, it may not be all that intense. Uh, but remember that Pluto has five more years to be in Capricorn. So, uh, if you're a later degree, uh, if you're, Plu if you're, um, it could affect you if you have planets in that 10th house and especially if they're after 20 degrees of, uh, Capricorn, that might be, um, something that you experience in a year or two or three where it really, um, affects you. But you know, what it really boils down to is kind of confronting you on your ambition because for Aries people, ambition is something that is second nature to you because you, your ruler is Mars and Mars in our horoscope is about our drive, driving instincts, our, our, um, our ambition. And the thing about Aries people, when they shoot themselves in the foot. It's usually because they are over there's they're too it's it's being overly ambitious, but it's also being very aggressive in their approach when they're trying to get something, accomplish something. And people can have a negative reaction about that if the Aries person doesn't learn how to dial it down. And so Pluto in your tenth house is totally uh, changing the way you think about what ambition really is, um, or, or what your career is all about. I forget about ambition, what your career is really about, because let's face it, Aries, if you have, uh, a higher consciousness, everything is ultimately for the service of others. And in doing so it benefits you whenever a person is selfishly trying to get ahead, which the 10th house is all about, you know, getting ahead, climbing the ladder of success, your reputation in the world. So we could say that your ego is tied into this uh, particular area of life. But there, to me, there is a healthy ego. There is a sense of pride, accomplishment. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's when it veers off into arrogance and you start to treat other people condescendingly and, so, and things like that. And there's a good chance that some of you Aries in the last 10 years, since Pluto has been in Capricorn, have experienced uh, being knocked down a peg and humbled. And yet it's a purification through fire. And so to me, there's nothing uh, terrible about that. It's It's really confronting your shadow self and ultimately can lead to self-improvement. And so Pluto is retrograding on the 22nd of April in this 10th house. Uh, five days earlier on the 17th, Saturn is retrograding in the 10th. And Saturn um, in your 10th house uh, just... Uh, began in late December and Saturn rules the 10th house. So it's a really good um, placement for Saturn to be because um, uh, since it, it uh, belongs here and it goes along with some of the themes of what the 10th house represents, obviously, since it, it rules that house. And so it can be very helpful for your career if you're willing to do the work and so when Saturn retrogrades, it's going to be asking you to do something um, over. You may have to exert m more effort in something related to your career. Uh, I mean, if you want to look at it in certain ways, maybe it involves training, and maybe that's why Venus is in the third house, that you're going to spend money on a certification that you need or something like that. But um, however that plays out for you, if you feel like things slow down a little bit 
in your career because of these two retrogrades. Have no fear because it's only a matter of months and it's an internal kind of a procedure. So it's going to be you doing things behind the scenes, but within yourself. It's more of an attitudinal shift in a lot of ways. But uh, I think with Saturn retrograde, it could involve something external like a course uh, of study or perhaps an internship, whatever, um, you know, some kind of a, I forgot what they call that when you're an apprenticeship, something like that, where you have to really learn something thoroughly uh, in order to progress in whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Now with Pluto uh, retrograding in the 10th house, this may uh, kind of dredge up some of the power plays and and the, the ways that you try to assert your authority, the way that you try to feel powerful in the world. You know, I always talk about petty tyrants, which is a term that I, I heard from Dr. Wayne Dyer, who passed away a couple of years ago and who's such a, was such a great self-help teacher and spiritual teacher, of course. But um, he said that, you know, these people that don't feel powerful within themselves and who use their power in a particular relationship, it could be a parent to a child or a boss to their employee, in order to gain that sense of power. And it's really so wrong because you're not supposed to try to gain power at the expense of another person. So this may come up for you in some way where you have to address that tendency if it's present within you and be able to come to terms with it. And, you know, Pluto and Saturn are both karmic planets. So you may have to deal with certain things in the next several months that are kind of, um, without saying the word faded, because I'm not really crazy about that word, but they they might be beyond your control. And you have to, I think the best thing you can do is to have full faith that no matter what happens to you, Aries, that you are going to be better afterwards, that this is done for your highest good. And I'm, that is totally not an ominous uh, statement uh, at all. But I'm just saying that we always should have that attitude no matter what. And um, I think a lot of Aries people in the last 10 years have taken their lumps because, you know, you've had these cardinal um, uh, sign situations that have affected like your angular houses. Um, uh, You have, uh, which are the, the first, fourth and 10th houses. So a lot of events can happen, especially when they're in cardinal signs. Okay. Um, you know, you, you've, you've had Uranus in your sign. Okay. So Uranus is very unpredictable. You may have had a lot of just general, um, you know, surprises coming into your life in, in the last seven years or so. And it's like, after one thing settles down, down, then it goes crazy again. Um, luckily, (laughs) luckily that's uh, changing, uh, this year for a few months when, Uranus goes into Taurus, but then it is going to retrograde back into your sign. But in 2019, for good, it's going to be in in, in uh, Taurus. But then you've had in your fourth house of home and family, um, you have a Cancer in this house. Now, Cancer hasn't, it, it's not Cancer specifically that I'm talking about, but the fact that uh, Pluto is opposing that house from the 10th house. So there is this kind of uh, push-pull between home life and career that you may have been dealing with, this opposition, and also, um, you know, just things coming about. And then the 7th house, Libra. And actually, you had Jupiter in this sign last year, and that could have been a very nice, pleasant influence uh, so it's not all bad, but it's change, you know, a lot of things happening. And um, so anyway, moving on from that, 
So as I said, Mercury turns direct on the 15th and you have a full moon on the 29th at nine degrees of Scorpio. This is your eighth house of other people's money, Aries, and this could be a time where you are uh, aware of, you find out about a, a will, an inheritance, or if you've already been dealing with this issue, that it comes to culmination, there's a decision, uh, what have you. So that might be the end of the road for that situation. So it's quite a, I mean, I think we could call it a rather intense month in certain ways. Um, but for you, it could be a good money month with Venus going in with Venus being in your uh, second house for most of the month and the sun going in there, uh, right after mid month. So again, I, I uh, wish you all the best for your solar return Aries. And if you'd like a private reading, um, I, I have natal charts. So if you want to uh, look at the upcoming 12 months of your um, next solar cycle. I, I don't go like day by day, month by month, but I look at certain areas of the life that people usually are interested in, love, money, career, and uh, just deal with those and other trends that are happening astrologically for you. Uh, the link is below. My website is com. Take care. Bye.